you know how to do these three things, you will pass your certification. Hey gang, it's Ron from ITMaskey.com and my job is to help each and every one of you guys get certified. So getting certified isn't easy. If it was easy, everybody would be certified and everybody ain't certified. There's a bunch of people that failed certifications over and over and over again and have given up or decided that IT wasn't for them. So along the journey, when you're trying to get certified, if it seems like it's too much, if it seems overwhelming, that's a good thing. When you feel overwhelmed, it just means that your brain is expanding. It's doing something new. It's trying something new. And after a while, you'll gain confidence because you'll have competence. So the first thing that you have to know how to do to pass your certification is know how to troubleshoot. So troubleshooting is going to be pretty much on every exam that you take. Very much so on CompTIA exams. So the students in the Zero to IT Hero program go through A+, Net+, and Security+, and we really hammer troubleshooting because on a lot of the CompTIA exams, you have a number of questions, and the number of questions that you have add up to the number of minutes that you have. So if you got 90 questions, a lot of times you only have 90 minutes to answer those questions. So if you only got 90 minutes, 90 questions, that means that you have to know what the hell you're doing. You got to be able to decipher information really fast and then go ahead and knock it out. So troubleshooting also helps you in the real world. When you get outside of the exam room, you get outside of the box, you're gonna know or you're gonna have to know how to troubleshoot stuff. Whether that's networks, or that's devices, or whether that's people, you're gonna have to learn how to troubleshoot. And when I say people, if you end up going the ethical hacking route, if you go the penetration testing route, you're gonna to have to know how to social engineer certain people, right? We can talk about that a little bit later, but basically social engineering is a way to uh, manipulate or a way to dig deeper into a person to get answers to questions that they may not want you to know, but it just seems like a friendly conversation and they'll give up the information that you want them to uh, give. So troubleshooting devices when they break, how do I fix them? How do I update them? What's wrong with them? Networks. Networks troubleshooting is a, a constant most times, right? You gotta make sure that what's the bandwidth? What's the latency? How do I optimize this? What's our uptime? What's our downtime? If this server breaks, how long does it take for it to come back up? Because believe it or not, servers are super important, right? If servers go down, depending on the size of the company, that can mean millions or billions. For instance, imagine if you go to Google and it's not working. You would probably get the bubble guts, get scared, and like, what the hell is going on? Because a good server is up more than 99% of the time. So pretty much, once you go to a website, it should be up. So troubleshooting is a skill that you must hone, keep on sharpening a sword, so you can go ahead and take it down when you actually go inside the exam room and when you step out of the exam room, when you're in interviews, you could actually um, go ahead and knock out the questions that they ask you. And also, when you get inside of the real world and actually get a job, you'll be able to perform your job at a high level. Number two is something that I always talk about is acronyms. Acronyms. What the hell does this stuff stand for? What happens if it breaks? On CompTIA exams specifically, you need to know acronyms, right? Not just acronyms, but that's one of the things that'll make the uh, questions a lot easier to decipher, right? Because a lot of times, instead of spelling something out, they'll have it in acronym form. So you have to know what the thing stands for and you have to know what it actually does. So whether it's an acronym or if it's spelled all the way out, you know exactly what it is. And then once you actually know exactly what it is, you will be able to decipher the information inside the actual question. Because on the CompTIA exams, the reason I keep on talking about CompTIA is because this is what my students go through and this is pretty much the training that as of right now, this is what we're geared towards because this is what's giving our students the most bang for their buck, right? So you can probably apply this stuff to other exams, but specifically we're talking about CompTIA right now. So the CompTIA exams, the way they word questions may be um, a little confusing, may be a little convoluted, but that's just to make sure that you know exactly how to do things, exactly what you're talking about and you have the skill set. So when you actually get out in the real world, you actually be able to perform 
the actual job. So acronyms, make sure that you are completely comfortable with acronyms. When something is in acronym form, you know what it stands for. You can break down what it is. Then, like I said, if it's missing, if it's broken, how would I fix that or how would I go about that? Or if it's missing, would that be a telltale sign of something else being wrong? Okay, so a lot of times if you know what the acronym stands for, you may not have to read the whole question. I recommend you read the whole damn question, but you may not have to read the whole uh, question before you know exactly what the answer is. Last but not least, number three is you got to be an analytical thinker. Right, so analytical thinking. You have to know how to analyze the information given to you and break it down and figure out what the answer is. So one of the previous tips or one of the previous steps or one of the previous skills that you have to have is troubleshooting. That word can be interchanged with problem solving. You have to be a problem solver. And if you know how to analyze things quickly, you know how to make a decision, you're very, very decisive, it's going to be very advantageous to you inside of the testing room, inside the interview room. And then when you actually go out into the tech field or go out into the tech world, you'll be able to move and shake uh, pretty easily because you're used to analyzing things quickly. Okay, this is what it is. This is what I need to do. Boom. Let's go ahead and make it happen. Okay. So the three things that you have to be good at, troubleshooting, acronyms, analytical thinking. Gang, this was a wonderful video. I know you liked it. Make sure you like, subscribe. If you haven't joined the channel yet, make sure that you join the channel. I want to thank uh, Jesse Williams. He is one of the latest people to join. Somebody else joined, but I can't remember their name, but I love you just the same. But other than that, I'll see you in class.